Hi, I'm Nick Redding. I'm the Executive Director of Preservation Maryland. And here today in Tolson's Chapel, we're excited to join with Edie Wallace, the immediate past president of the organization that is dedicated to preserving this place, as well as a historian in her own right. Um, and Tolson's Chapel is, is an incredible place. It's an evocative place. Um, you can't help but be captured by the history when you come in here. Um, but it's also one of these places that makes up part of the untold sort of underrepresented history of both Sharpsburg but also the Battle of Antietam and sort of this broader story of why Antietam matters. Um, but Edie, while we're here with you, tell us a little bit about what this place is and, and what it was and why it matters so much. Uh, well, Tulsa's Chapel was a Methodist Episcopal church uh, established by the African American community of Sharpsburg in 1866, just two years after emancipation in Maryland. So um, it was uh, their first um, uh, physical manifestation of, of the freedom that they had just so recently achieved. Um, and it became the center of the community um, in 1868. It also became a Freedmen's Bureau sponsored school, um, and which continued into 1869. And, and then it continued on through the 1870s and into the 1890s for about 30 years as the county colored school for Sharpsburg. So it, it, it served this double um, service uh, to the community that were two of the most important um, elements of community um, for, this, for these people um, that helped them pull themselves up and, and into society and become successful. Uh, it was really a successful community. And so also, all too often, you know, not only here in Washington County, but all across the state, all across the country, we lose so many places that tell these important stories, particularly African-American resources. Why did this survive? And I suppose, what did it look like when you first found it? <laughs> Well, it survived because it was an active church, and it remained an active church into the 20th century. Um, uh, the, the congregation began to uh, diminish uh, after the 18, 1930s as um, agriculture changed and, and the jobs began to, the rural jobs began to disappear, and so people were moving out of town. Uh, but it continued to hold services monthly and to uh, the 1950s and annually into the 1970s and it was finally closed in 1998 after the last member still living in Sharpsburg passed away. Um, it survived, it's on the back street in Sharpsburg and it survived not over at, in the way of anything. <laughs> um, it, and I do have a picture, I'm stepping out just for a minute. Um, this is what it looked like um, when we came in to take care of it. Um, so it was kind of unassuming, uh, a very humble little building, totally preserved underneath. Antietam isn't fought in a vacuum, and um, you know, it, it's, its critical importance and its relevancy is not only the action that occurred on the field, but the consequences of it. The Emancipation Proclamation, the change in the war, uh, and ultimately the emancipation and you know, freedom of all the African American people that were enslaved across the South and in states like Maryland. So how can you tell the story of Antietam without a place like Tolson's Chapel, but Tolson's Chapel isn't fully integrated into that? Do you think it will be someday? How, where could we go with this? Well, I mean, my dream would be that it, it would be um, become a part of the battlefield, I, but you know, that would take, take Congress <laughs> to, to do that. But, um, we do have a good relationship with the battlefield folks. Um, the interpreters are aware of Tulsa's Chapel. Um, they, they talk about it um, if people are, are interested. Um, there is a brochure I, that I had written years ago that talks about uh, the African Americans on the battlefield and their connection to, to Tulsa's Chapel. So um, that connection is there. Uh, we also are working on our educational program, our online educational program, um, trying to uh, tie in with um, the Antietam story. And of course, 
the Emancipation Proclamation didn't free the slaves right. um, here in Maryland, and um, kind of ironic for the slaves that were living on the battlefield um, of Antietam at the time. And so they weren't freed until more than a year later by the Maryland Constitution. But um, it still is a very connected story, and my favorite uh, way of saying it that I heard somebody say is that um, Tulsa Chapel is the rest of the story um, of what, what we see on Antietam Battlefield. Well, I think that's a great place to end it. Thank you so much for having us today in this important place. I love having you here.